down to 45 percent <laughs> strange I maths I didn't even realize I did that. right let's do this just do this let's thing. do this let's do it it's ian lee there he is great tv presenter radio personality thief what do you, on, uh, what do you mean by thief stories. what do you mean by thief the strawberries uh the Remember strawberries that? yeah i do i've got 14 questions about the strawberries um <laughs> for you today hello ian thank you so much for coming on random access memories this is really exciting thank you for asking me i've been listening to this i've really enjoyed this podcast i've listened to a few of them and i'm i'm thrilled to be on so thank you brilliant i mean you've got a, a lot i mean episode three was the one um you've got a lot to live up to uh but i before we get to your game you have bought a game with you i have got and, a game um, yes and it's uh i was so thrilled to rediscover this game so yeah i'm very excited about it well i'll be thrilled to discover it because i've never heard of it before but we'll we'll, we'll get to that and okay. um, i was interested because you've obviously i've listened to thousands of hours of you talking okay. <laughs> i've got to admit that's a big i'm time. assuming you mean my radio shows and not just bugging my house and stuff <laughs> Oh, yeah, I just hacked into your Alexa. Um, no, I, 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 your radio shows and uh, your podcasts. Thank you. Um, and I've always wondered, what, why, why retro gaming? Why is that side of gaming the most interesting to you? It is because I think there's some kind of arrested development there. There was something very special for me growing up with those old computers, the old Dragon 32. I remember seeing someone ZX81 and just thinking, oh my God, this is amazing. And yeah. I think there is some reluctance to grow up. I kind of, I had a big gap in my gaming history, went from kind of BBC and Commodore and Spectrum, and then I stopped with a little dabbling with the master system, but I stopped. And then I got back in when I saw a Sega Saturn, I was at a friend's house. They had a black box on the under their telly. So, what's that black box? I'm thinking it might be like Sky or something. And they went, "Oh, it's a Sega Saturn. Do you want to have a go?" And they put Wipeout on, and it it was it was like going from um, you know a school days on the ZX Spectrum to Wipeout. It was it it was just it blew my mind. Um, but why retro? I've just it, it's been reignited. Last year I went to Liverpool, and in a junk shop they had a Dragon 32 computer that was the first computer I ever had. And I just was kept salivating at it and I didn't buy it, but I went home and I kept looking at them on eBay and I kept, and of course I ended up buying one. And yeah. then I just started watching loads of YouTube channels of um, predominantly middle-aged stroke old men fixing Amigas and fixing Ataris and fixing Spectrums. And I just found it, it I found it very calming, very relaxing. And new, it take new... you back when when you're when you're looking into consoles like that when yeah. you, when you're it, does it take you back to being a kid when you originally had them or do you appreciate them from the perspective of you getting this thing now what, what's that's the... that's a great question it, it, it's somewhere between the two um i can i've got you know i buy this stuff and i don't use it that's the thing i buy all of this stuff and it piles up i've recently bought an xbox 360 and under here i've got a dreamcast and a gamecube and in there i've got a dragon and i've got a, a bbc but i like researching it the pleasure for me now is researching it looking at prices looking at mods and getting it and the bbc is set up in my kitchen with an old crt monitor and it's modded so I've got, it's got every game on it and it looks beautiful. So I, now I can um, enjoy its beauty. But I think, yeah, it does. It does take me back. I remember, you know, um, I remember being 10 with a BBC micro, maybe a little bit older. And my friends, um, Orlando and Christopher Kelly, they um, they they were liars. Basically, they were terrible. <laughs> they were lovely human beings and they were liars. And they told me um, that their BBC had somehow connected to what we used to be called Prestel, right? Which was a very, very old fashioned in internet before we had the word internet. That their BBC, that a clock had appeared and it was telling the time and they were able to exchange messages with other computers. Now they weren't connected to anything. This was just in their living room, <laughs> right? And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So that night I set up my BBC and I had to kind of do it in the hall because I put, and I put, <laughs> oh my God. Then I put the telephone, it had to be in the hall because we didn't have those long leads. And I put <laughs> the telephone amazing. on top of the computer and I started <laughs> typing 
Hello? <laughs> Wait. That's amazing. Clock? Because I was trying to get this clock up, they meant clock. Is there anyone there? Then I thought, right, okay, well, I need to take the phone off the hook. So I take the phone off the hook. And if I put that on the, the speaker in the corner, hello? Yeah, and I was there for about 45 minutes. What if it works, though? What if it worked? Screw you, um, Berners Lee. Could have been Ian Lee that <laughs> discovered, <laughs> discovered it. But that, but back in the day, we didn't know what computers were. We didn't know what they could do. So Christopher and Orlando tell me this. They they God they were a God fearing family. Well, this must be true. I'll go and do it. And I went into school the next day. I couldn't get it to work. Couldn't get it to work. Oh, maybe you're doing it wrong. Never mind. <laughs> I miss that. I, I I really do miss the um the lack of communication between school was yeah. a big part of this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but also the lies. You, people used to just make stuff up yeah. and you would believe it. Oh, if you go to this area in this game, then you can, I remember, if, if you remember Goldeneye, getting the sniper rifle out on the first level, the dam level, and yeah. seeing that island in out into the distance and thinking, what is there? And there was no way of knowing because back then, you know, it was, there, there might be an article about it in a magazine, but no one be, would be able to actually get there. Yeah. But there'd be one kid at school saying, so I went there last night, I got there, I did this. <laughs> And I went into that. What was there? Oh, there were guns and web dad, like the best guns in there, basically. And you go, had the best guns I need in to, there. I need to try that. And you would go home and you would try for hours. And then you come in the next day and go, did you do it? No, I didn't do it. And then you realize like later on, people, you know, managed to break the game and go and see what was in there. There's nothing in there. Right. And you just think, didn't have right, the best weapons. Well, it didn't have the best weapons, yeah. did it? It was so annoying. But I do miss that sort of, exchange of information like in that very specific setting i had another and, one on the, the I, there was only one other kid i knew who had a dragon his name was was james i, I won't no need to say his last name just in case he's he's a killer and wants to come and find me but mm. he had a dragon and he said oh i've got night rider on the dragon what not what the tv show yeah 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 i've got to bring it in tomorrow I, it was three months of me going did you bring it in oh no i forgot i forgot i forgot <laughs> three months I only found about 10 years ago, I remembered this and went, was there ever a night rider? And I Googled, there was never a night rider for the Dragon 32. <laughs> he just, he'd invented this carrot and had spent three months dangling a fake carrot in front of me. And I'm like, yeah, give it to me, give it to me. But yeah, the <laughs> lies that were, that were told and we, you didn't know, we didn't really have the magazines then either. Certainly not when I was that age, this is like 1982. So we didn't have the game. Yeah. So, um, did you did you spend any time in arcade uh, arcades when they started cropping up? Did you do you have the same love for retro arcade games as you do with home computers? Uh, yeah, we we lived in Slough, so we were completely landlocked. So the only real time we got arcades was when we went to the seaside or when Roses Fair came along every year what rose was roses is, fair it was a fairground I, I guess owned by the rose family i'm not totally sure <laughs> here's another thing they used to have talk about myths they had dive bombers which are these two sort of like pointy airplanes on a spinning wheel so you would you would kind of go go straight down then you'd spin up and you'd go straight yeah, down. yeah i know those yeah yeah a baby died on that no, no, of course not. But every oh, every year, sake. every year, why, they, why would they let a baby on it? What exactly. With... Every year, someone would go. Well, you know, a baby died on that. <laughs> why was the baby riding it? In... Why, yeah, if it happened again, again, it's these lies. And I love can I just clarify though? Really I, 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 a baby did not die on it, and I'm not making joke of it. It was one of those lies that kept. Yeah, that yeah, baby dies on that. We had we had the, the the mad axe man that lived down the on the bridge over the allotments. Mm. That was and ah, oh, if you go up to his garage and you bang on the door, he will come out and run after you. And we, you would go to the garage. Everyone would go and stare at this garage door. I feel sorry for the person that lived there. Yeah. Because every day they'd have school kids looking at this garage door. Oh, there was and there was someone there. Other towards it. No, they were never there. Oh, okay. well, I don't know. I never knocked. I never, I never, none of us had the uh, had the balls to actually knock on that door. But it was, and it probably it was just some bloke's house or it's someone's house, and they're looking out and just, why are the kids out by my garage door again? Or he's there no, sharpening his it. knife. It could have been. Yeah. 
He could have been. We yeah. never, we will never know. But so, what was your favourite arcade game at Rosen's Fair then? Um, uh, it was, it, it was, it was. There were, there were uh, Donkey Kong. I've, I've always been a big, big fan of Donkey Kong. But my favourite one, I can't remember what it's called. I think it was called Drive or something and it was black and white had two steering wheels and it was like a sort of it was a top down picture of like a sort of um racetrack like a grand prix right, racetrack. I know, yeah, and yeah. you had these there were four tiny tiny little cars and there were oil slicks and it was the hardest thing well i can't remember what it was called it was it was and it was black and white and it was the hardest thing to steer in the world and it is the only time i can remember playing video games with my dad it's the only time is really? we'd, we'd have a go. We'd have a go on that. We'd see that and we'd go and stand. And I think it had a pedal on the floor, which at the time was, it was like the equivalent of VR now. It's, oh my God, it's got a pedal on the floor. It's like real driving. So that was, that was um, the game. The first game I got addicted to was we were in holiday in, in Spain when it was still a thing to go abroad. I must have been, I probably about, Eight, so that would have been about 1981. And now I don't really remember much about it. I remember there was this weird, like little, so it was like a bar and it had a like a really crappy wooden door, white wooden door. And they had a game called Popeye in there where you right. had to, you had basically your Popeye and you had to go and collect all these hearts and, and hit Brutus or Bluto, depending where you're from. And I can remember, I remember going there on my own when I was like eight. Imagine letting an eight-year-old boy go into a weird Spanish bar on his own. And then I remember going back to my mum and dad at the beat or the hotel or wherever and saying, come on, can I get some more pesetas? I want to get some more pesetas, please. Yeah. So that was the first yeah. thing I was really, really addicted to. I had the same thing. I, my, whenever we went on a family holiday, if we went to Spain or somewhere, my, my parents would spend so much time in the local bars and just give me a handful of change. And I would sit and play. It was either Bubble Bobble Ooh, or yeah. uh, Metal Slug when I was a little bit older, I think. Yeah. Um, and I remember you, you first gravitate towards the games that you can get the most time out of per yeah. coin. Yeah. Because the ones that you play, you put a coin in and you're done. You're like, no, it's just a waste, isn't it? But you, I remember um, Metal Slug, you could play for a good half an hour on I, one coin. I never played. I mean, the biggest waste of money was Dragon's Lair, which some people call Dragon's, right, yeah. Dragon's Slayer. They call it Slayer. That was the one that was like a cartoon on Laserdisc, and it was a queer yeah, it 50p. Amazing. Well, it looks amazing, but it's unplayable. And you, but you, <laughs> you would just keep pumping that. It must have been 50p. I think it was before pound coins. Anyway, I, someone will correct me as the internet loves to do. But you'd pump that money in, and I never, I don't think I've got past the second screen. It was unplayable. Yeah, it was really hard to tell which way you were supposed when you were supposed to press left or right, left, yeah. which way you're supposed to press. But that's a trick because that does lead me to my next question. Like, what's your favorite way of controlling a game? Because there are many ways of controlling a game. You've got you got the Wiimote, you've got a, a classic controller, yeah. You've got uh, the power glove. Remember that? Yeah, I never <laughs> I've never the used a power, power glove, but I've I've heard legend of it. Yes. <laughs> Mouse and keyboard. I don't know anyone. No, really like no, my it. kids have started well, doing that, and they they have oh. the keyboard at a jaunty angle, and I don't I don't get it. I don't approve. Is of it that. a wireless keyboard or a wired one? Maybe? Oh, it's wired because of the lag. You can't have wireless. Excellent. Great big scissors. Get some comedy sized scissors <laughs> and just cut the cord, <laughs> and then pass them a, an Xbox controller. <laughs> I can tell you what? my favorite control system. Yes, please. It's on a, a computer, and it's very specific to the BBC Micro. ZX left and right, and I need to look at my keyboard here on this computer. ZX left and right, and then I don't quite know what the, it would it would be. Well, on here it's apostrophe and slash forward slash. Uh, right. I, I got a feeling on the BBC it was it was colon and and full stop. So ZX were always. I nearly uh, um, uh, a long time ago I was thinking of doing a gaming podcast, and I nearly called it ZX left and right because that is the mantra for me. So that's my I'm favorite. I'm sure a friend gave you a much better title. For someone, that. Did. Um, someone did. And the space bar is jump or fire. Of course, that's my favorite control system. So that was actually on the system itself, right? That wasn't, uh, did you have to attach it to anything? What was the? Sorry, that was the BBC micro. That was the, that was the computer. It was the actual keyboard. That See, we... How would you, would you sit it on your lap then? Is no, that how you'd use it? No, because it feels like I'm talking about a hoop and a stick. No, what? I so, mean, you are. 
<laughs> I forget that you're actually significantly younger than me. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it was the computer. So it was, you know, the BBC Micro, a big old chunky thing with a keyboard on it, like a typewriter. And right. you wouldn't have it on your lap because it was too heavy. You'd have it on the table. You'd have the, if you were lucky, you'd get the colour portable, but otherwise it was the black and white portable. And you'd have that off to just one side. And you, yeah, you would use your fingers on letters. You're, so you'd have these two fingers here would be the Z and the X. These here would be the up and down, and the space bar was the fire. If you were, I didn't like playing with joysticks on home computers. That did, Why didn't not? keyboard keyboard all the time. Unless it's a Spectrum, then you're going to need a Kempston. But it was. I, mean, it, I used to love the joysticks because we had an Atari STE, and I remember um, with the joysticks. What was what was funny about them is that if you got two into the game, yeah. The Thing would move if you were pressing up. Oh, so then you got, I think it was a zip stick, it was called, with the suckers <laughs> on the bottom. Oh, yeah, I used to have the uh, joystick you used with to suckers. Lick them and stick them down onto the table. And, when and you were kids, you would lick anything, up. wouldn't you? Imagine that dirty suckers on the bottom of a joystick, yeah. and yeah. sticking that on. Yeah, yeah. I think it was um, trick or treating that ruined that because that's when nasty things being given to kids that was where all the rumors started and yeah the more started, rumors and razor blades in apples and lsd yeah in um uh, so imagine lsd in Swiss. what would your what's your favorite control system oh um i would have to say my favorite is the gamecube controller oh yeah that's yeah because that's a good it's one. so stupid and lovely and that yeah. big old a button makes me smile every time i see it it makes no sense the little C stick compared to the main control stick and those springy triggers for um yeah. for uh, uh, monkey bowling was is doesn't get much better than that. It, it monkey bowling. Do you, do you, is it monkey bowling or super monkey ball? Well, it's super monkey ball, but the mode was, is monkey bowling. There was bowling, monkey bowling. And uh, you could add spin on <laughs> on those triggers. It's amazing. Another uh, one, one more final control. The the original Atari joystick is so satisfying. Black one with the red button. One with the red button, it feels great in the hand. It's a really stiff stick, and that button, pressing that button, that's that's satisfying. That takes me back to being eight years old. I'm I'm in someone's living room doing that. You know, it's that's it's very. Uh, I'm ADHD, and one of the things that we are quite often we, we quite often have associate a lot of feeling with touch. Touch can bring up so many memories. So if I'm holding an old Atari joystick, it's time travel. I'm 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 back in my mate's living room playing. They, not the, funny. I I get that with smells. Okay. So, um, if if it's a cold day and I have a, a smell a hint of cigarette, like someone's smoking outside a shop or something, yeah. as I'm passing, I'm back at, at my football ground for the team that I support when when I first started going, and I can I'm like back there again. Yeah, I can really feel it. Yeah, it's mad that it's it's crazy how the, how the mind works with that stuff. But seeing as we're talking about the BBC Micro right yes. now, yes, let's get to your game because. For starters, when you first sent it to me, I was Googling it and couldn't find it because uh, you called it Sum. Oh, um, did I? Well, that's not going to help. It's, it's not its <laughs> name. But even with its name, it's still quite hard to find anything about it. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Even if you search Sim, the game is called Sim. Yeah. And if you search Sim BBC Micro, most of the results are Sim City BBC Micro. Yeah, which I didn't know existed. I bet it's terrible on the BBC Sim City. Yeah, that's I awful. can't imagine that uh, being uh, a thing. But it, it's so weird. Why did you choose this? I don't think anybody remembers this game. Before this evening, I was I've been doing a little bit of research into this, and I played it a few times. Um, and I went on a BBC, I'm on a BBC micro Facebook page. And I put, has anyone, has anyone ever filmed a walkthrough of this? And some people knew it. A couple of people went, I've never heard of this. It's, um, nine, I think it's 1984. It's written by a guy called uh, Joshua Portway. More on him in a moment. And the basic premise is, you're, you're this like dude it has got a name and all of that backstory, but sort of in like a jetpack. I think it was around, I do you know, I think it was just after NASA started building jetpacks, jetpacks for spacemen. Um, and I think it's modeled on that. And you've got a jetpack and you have to fly around this maze and, and this, this kind of area, there's tunnels and there's a maze and there's sky and there's all this stuff. And you have to go and collect these, I think they're called Simaril crystals sim that's right yeah yeah and um it is nuts the first thing that strikes you it has got the most insanely addictive 
earworm that plays all and all around on a loop. And it's it's so good. I time traveled listening to it today. Um and it's really, really hard. It's really hard. And it's weird. There's a weird bit where it's got the channel four. There's a room with the channel four logos. I was going to say, I watched a video yep. of uh, this and there is channel four <laughs> logos bouncing about. What's that about? I think, I th well, so it's 1984. I think, it's I, not see, I actually channel four logo, is it? It's, yeah. it's just something that looks like it. No, it is. Because I think that was yeah. quite possibly the year or shortly after when channel four started i'm old enough to remember when we had three channels so i remember two but i remember three i remember when tv would stop at about three o'clock in the afternoon for a couple of hours imagine that right. bbc would stop yeah. and channel four was this big big thing and we used to watch the test signal because it would say coming soon channel four and then every now and then they'd show a trailer of like countdown and brookside and stuff and it was exciting so i think it is the channel four logo my, i have actually got the character's name in front of me and i i i, I mean we've got to let people know what this character's it's called it's it's, 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 it's not like engelbert de filmadom or something isn't it it's something wild hercules k orange bottom <laughs> oh, we're so dumb he's been sent by um her majesty's government as well i think is the the premise because they've run out of energy or something yeah it's her majesty's government <laughs> yeah this is um this is interesting i've never seen it before it looks like it controls terribly and uh oh and the setup for it is is look you've got to find these th things there's 10 of them scattered around 70 screens yeah and you've got to return them to the temple. Every I time. never got more than four. Actually, it controls really, really well. That if you're doing the ZX left and you got to, you got to redefine the keys, ZX left and right. Uh, it, it controls really, really well. It's one of those ones where the um, the, the clash detection thing it's it's a little bit mean. So you've got to be a bit careful. It controls really well. Apparently, I didn't know this. There's a bug in it, which means it's impossible to complete. So you can't really? finish. Yeah, there's a bug. Oh, in it. imagine being the first person that found that. <laughs> You'd be gutted, wouldn't you? The old days and then were you go wild. To the next ad, so I'll let tell everyone that you completed it. Yeah, I finished it. It's great. <laughs> so, and, yeah. and, and and you. Well, here's the interesting thing. If you, I think there was a later version or a patch or something. Maybe there was a, a different version. Maybe for the BBC Master or something. If you did win. Joshua Portway, the, the, the ending was very disappointing. It was a, a screen that said, well done, you've completed it. Here's Joshua's phone number. Why don't you call him up and let him know how you got on? And it was his phone number. And you could phone him up. But I don't think anyone did because no one, it was. So I see, the problem is you've got me in the mode of now questioning everything or whether you're lying again. That's the problem. Me? <laughs> Why would it? one of the one of the greatest things that, that ever this I found this really inspiring in my art, which is why I like to sometimes give out my phone numbers and things. Frank Sidebottom, who I was a big fan of, he released an EP. I got it for Christmas, and one of the songs was called Timperley 9691909. That was Chris Seavey's home phone number. And you'd phone up and he would he would have like an answer phone with messages and you'd leave messages. And sometimes, just sometimes. Frank Sybottom would answer the phone and talk to you. Didn't do it, didn't, I never got that. But I think it was a thing in the 80s to put your phone number in. <laughs> Games, records, that. toilet walls, those kind of uh, so, places. So, well, I get the toilet wall thing. I don't. So out of all the games that yeah. you could have picked, what? why Why Sim? I don't, I don't When you ask me to it. come on, right, and I thought, well, I'm not going to do what a lot of people do. I'm not going to pick something obscure that no one's ever heard of because that's yeah. the obvious thing to do. And I was going to go with Pac-Man because I do think Pac-Man is the greatest video game of all time. One stick, if we go to an arcade with my boys, I can get to like screen four on Pac-Man. They think I'm a god. They think, you know, the ones where you, you, you can go and you can win like tokens now. It's all tokens. Right, the, the, what, the massive ones. Like, yeah, yeah. They're, they're huge, aren't they? And yeah. Do they play just as well as the original then? Well, the one, the one in the arcade in Milton Keynes, it, 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 it's sticky when you turn right. So you've got to anticipate the right <laughs> a bit. But I've, I'm, I'm regularly winning 500 tokens on there. I'm a god. So I was going to do that. But then I just started thinking through 
And this popped up in my mind. I hadn't thought of it for years. I remembered the, the song. I remembered, I, I thought, I remember it looking beautiful. Of course, it doesn't look quite as good as I remember, but I still think it's pretty good looking. And I just remember I, I had so much fun on it and I never hear it spoken about. Everyone talks about Elite and everyone talks about maybe Citadel and all of these things on the BBC. No one talks about this game. And I don't think, I don't know if it sold very well, but I don't think many people know about it. And it was a joy to, when I was thinking of the few, this is the one that may be the happiest. And I went and played it and there was a lot of, <laughs> there was a lot of me going, oh, fuck because it is so difficult so difficult but it's one of those games that i used to sit there for hours and hours playing it and it was a joy to play it again i would i would love to know if we could get in touch with who who was it who, who? well joshua portway I'm looking at joshua portway because i'm looking at the credits here yeah and saskia portway did the music she well now here's the thing so I knew I was doing this tonight and I did some digging and I mentioned it and, and then I, I looked up Joshua Portway. I think this is the only game he made. And then he went on, I think, to be a musician. And it said, he, and I tried to find him on Twitter. He wasn't there. And it said, Joshua Portway worked a lot with this. And I can't remember the, um, with uh, Lisa, uh, with Lise Autogena. I hope I've got that right. It mentions it worked with her. And I found her on Twitter. So I messaged right. her and I said, look, I hope this doesn't sound weird. I'm sorry to jump on your timeline. I just, I've been playing this game uh, a lot and, and you, I think your friend Joshua made it. And I just want to pass on to him how much pleasure it brought me. She replied, she replied, how amazing. She spoke to him. How amazing. Josh says not to play the Electron version. It's impossible due to being forced to release in a hurry. Also, his sister wrote the music. Also, he's he is scared you may undermine your childhood if you're forced to confront the disillusionment of punctured nostalgia. Confronting the dis disillusionment of punctured nostalgia. And then she wrote, also, he'd love to talk ADHD sometime. Here's his email. <laughs> what? So I haven't written to him yet, but I'm going to write to him. That was a roller coaster ride of a message. What a there? beautiful sentence. Forced to confront the disillusion disillusionment of punctured nostalgia. I, I love that. Claustrophobic during that as it was coming in. So I'm going to, I will send him an email and I will point him in the direction of your podcast, uh, David. And um, Thank you. And I might have him on. I think I should have him on. Maybe that'd you should be, have him on. That'd be a cracking episode. Um, Okay, um, but I was, I, you know, I, I have got a couple of uh, quick fire questions for you. Okay, let's do it. Can we? Can we? I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Uh, you okay, know, you can ask quick. me anything you want to ask me. Uh, yeah, but I'd rather people not hear the sort of questions that I want to ask you. That's <laughs> the problem. I'm more embarrassed about the questions I want to ask than the, the, the okay. answers. Sega on Nintendo. It's Sega. Really? Oh, Sega. totally. Totally. I, 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 the, the, These aren't quick fire questions at all. They're just uh, short ones full of um, up Why? <laughs> I just, I just think that uh, I'm a big Dreamcast. I think the consoles, up until they they gave Sega gave up. Well, Sega was 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 completely bullied by PlayStation Two, right? I think it was PlayStation Two, wasn't it? Uh, it was PlayStation One when the Saturn come out. Well, the Saturn yeah, was, was, was not very good. Really bad. But yeah. the, but the Dreamcast was a, is a great console. But but Sony kept going. Ah ah ah. Uh, 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 PlayStation 2's coming out. It's got an emotion chip. We've got a game called Bouncer, right? Didn't have an emotion chip, and Bouncer was crap. And it, was shit, it yeah. killed the Dreamcast. So uh, Sega, Sega, Sega. Out of those two. Um, I mean, you're wrong, but um, oh. what's your fi favorite? <laughs> what's your favorite thing to have a video game on? If you could have a video game on a thing, would it be cartridge? What do you disc, mean? Floppy oh. disc? Cassette. Would it be a tape? What would it's, it be? Well, do you know what? It's a, it's it, if I'm being nostalgic, it's a cassette. But actually, I've got this beautiful little thing. It's called a GoTech, and it's it's a flash drive, and it plugs into my BBC Micro, and I just turn a switch, press a button, I'm playing Repton within seconds. <laughs> it sounds like when you say turn a switch, it sounds like you need to wind it up a little bit, get it going. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a game that you like to a modern take on? Is there an old favourite that you think actually I would like? like so for example, I don't know if you ever played Pac-Man Championship Edition on the 360. 
I did have a go. Yeah, uh, no, I played the one on the Switch. What was that? Pac-Man 1969 or something? Oh, that's Pac-Man 99. Pac-Man if you've 99. got a 360, then definitely, definitely give Championship Edition a go because that is a beautifully modern take on Pac-Man. It's so good. Um, Can I tell it's you? It's very different. One of the treasures. I got rid of all my gaming stuff years ago and then been buying them out. One of the treasures I had. So I went to, I was lucky enough to go to Japan and meet Toru Iwatani, the guy that created Pac-Man. Very strange gentleman, sweating a lot. And we had 12 people watching while I interviewed him just to make sure he told the story about it being a pizza, which I don't believe. To get that interview, <laughs> me and the production team, with me and, and uh, James Webber and, and Simon, we, we had to go and sit in a meeting about 20 people, we had one translator, our translator, and about 20 people. And at the end of the table was the actual head of Namco, the boss of Namco. We had to do all the bowing. Oh, quite the boss. Sorry, I thought just the head. I was sorry. <laughs> this is getting bleak. This and he wanted, to, he just wanted to hear the questions. And he, he and Toru Iwatani signed a copy of whatever that crap 3D Pac-Man game was that was out in the early 2000s, some crap right, right. thing. And it was signed by him. And I have no idea where that went. And I just oh, think, that is a oh, killer. man. Yeah, I remember. I remember because that was you met him for Thumb, Thumb Candy. Thumb Candy, yeah, that was what that was. I, and yeah. I, uh, I mean, we watched that uh, together a couple of years ago now. Yeah. And uh, the one moment that really stuck out to me that made me feel like I'd been punched in the gut Thanks. was Shigeru Miyamoto <sighs> drawing a personalized picture of Mario on a whiteboard instead of a bit of paper that you could have pocketed. He was doing, he was doing the, our cameraman as Mario, so it's Mario holding the camera. And, um, you know, I felt so blessed that I did that. I wish I'd treated him with more respect, and I just wish I'd given him a bit of paper and said, would you, could you, you know, it was, uh, but it was you... going in there. That was a tough one to organize. And we're sat in this really cold clinical room. And then suddenly this, it's like Paul McCartney walking into a room. You, this guy is like got... that at the time. Cause I know he's like, like obviously massive now, but, yeah. but back then he was as, that oh, was Shigeru Miyamoto. It was, I mean, was... obviously it would be harder to get access to him now. And we, we were so oh, lucky yeah. we got it, yeah. but he came in and it's, it's you know you know sometimes you're sat you're sat in a room and someone with great presence walks in and you're not even looking at the door but you know someone has come in that was him just this personality he's you know really beautiful to look at very well dressed very big smiley face and yeah. charming like really sincere charm i feel i yeah it was it was like mccartney or someone like that walking into it it was wonderful wonderful uh I, I, I love that man. <laughs> I really yeah. do. Every time you see him uh, on anything, he, he, I just smile. I just grin from ear to ear. The, it's the childlike it. quality that he's always maintained, I think. And I think that's infectious to big kids like us. But yes. is there a game series that you'd like to see a modern take on? Oh, that? sorry. That was a question. <laughs> In there. You, um, is there. Um, do you know. Do you know what? I, I, I think Defender is grossly, I think Defender is forgotten, right? And I yeah. would like something kind of Defender based where it takes a second person to push a hyperspace button where you're kind of doing most of the controls, but there's one button that you can't reach and you've got someone waiting for you to go now. Are you ah, too slow? So, so kind of a, a, a new Defender that has one button for, for the second person to press. There is it there, now. This isn't what you're describing, but have you heard of a game called? I think it's called Space Team for the phone. For the with, phone, with your phone. No, I've not yeah. heard of Space Team. No. There's this amazing game called Space Team, and yeah. I, I, we should really play it at some point, where you can get like four or five people in a room, each with a mobile phone. Oh. And the idea is that you're controlling a spaceship. Yeah. Um, but you'll have some controls in front of you, and then you'll have a panel that says turn the z toggle up to eight and then you go well you haven't got a z toggle As it, who's oh, got the z toggle turn it up to eight I and like they've got that. to do it but while that's up and by by like two minutes in you're just all screaming at each other because, i like that you know your task hasn't been done we should we should play i that like that that reminds me of that game um i think you can play it's, it's best on on vr where someone's dis diffusing a bomb and yeah, you've got the instruction booklet yeah and they, uh Oh, what is it called? Quiet it's, or 
it's like quick or we all die or something like that. We're, like, we're, yeah. yeah, it's so it, it gets to I play it with my kids and then it gets to a point where it's just, the puzzles are just too difficult and I, I'm out. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's it, you, you're in a room with a briefcase and there's a bump. Right, okay. There's there's a green wire. There's a yellow wire. There's the number seven and an upside down three. Okay, right. Let me just let me just look at that. Oh, I love it. That stuff there's like a that. Brilliant is great. YouTube video of real bomb disposal uh, people <sighs> playing it. And honestly, down. it takes them about 10 seconds. It's so that really, yeah, they, I'm writing they that just, down. They I'm just blitz that. through it. It's so funny. Like, oh, that's great. It just each instruction is just so well uh, thought out. It's, that's yeah, great. it's brilliant. That's worth, that's worth watching. Okay, I how have are these quick fire questions going? <laughs> quick fire question for you. I need a new name for them. Um, if you could be a character, like if you could have appeared as a character in any video game, yeah, what would it be? I'd have been John Striker in Striker's Run. It's another BBC game you won't know that actually looks similar to Sim. And he's this soldier dude, right? And he's got, or just, it's just, you're just running a straight line. Again, I never got anywhere near, I saw a map of it, got nowhere near. You're running a straight line and you can chuck grenades, you can fire guns. Sometimes you can fly, heli if there's a helicopter there and it's got fuel in, or you can have that. So yeah. You I, could get I, in the helicopter and fly that. Yeah, 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 you could. I just thought he was the coolest dude. There was a second game, Strikers Run 2, codenamed Droid, which I also like. But I would be John Striker, Strikers Run. Either that or Hen House Harry. You know Hen House Harry? <laughs> I do know Hen House Harry, yeah. He, Why do I know Hen House Harry? He's the Chucky Egg what? dude. Oh, of course. That's what the, Chucky Egg was a strange game, wasn't it? Have you played it recently? I haven't. No, Dude, no, it's great. It's still. Is it still decent? Great. If my, if I, if, if we've been to a few retro events, my kids, if they see Chucky Egg, that's it. They're in. Chucky Egg really? is still a really, really good game. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool because I mean I haven't connected with uh, my kids with older games yet. You know they're yeah. all Harry's just starting to get into uh, Fortnite, which you know, um, you know got no choice about that um uh and and charlie is is he plays a lot of uh mario games but i've not had a situation where i could say oh look at like banjo kazooie or the games right. that i played when i was a kid that you I mean new recent games is i think is what you're talking about there when you mentioned bango banjo kazooie <laughs> how long ago banjo was that it's like five years um, right well no yeah no that's fair enough um but, uh uh but i'm trying to think of it's probably about like, 25 years banjo kazooie i suppose bomb, bomb jack Bomb Jack, Bomb Jack and uh, uh, what was it? Double Dragon. I played with uh, my dad. Was one of the only games that I played with my dad. Um, but I, it, they look at them and they just go, "No." So is they have I got a chance later on? No, to they won't try they won't, that again. They won't give a toss. No, no. <laughs> They don't get a toss, you know. My my kids, there are a few get old games. Donkey Kong, my eldest loves Donkey Kong. My youngest is is really dug Centipede when he played it. Um, if we if um, Choo Choo Rocket on the Dreamcast, if we've got that up, we'll have a game. We'll have yeah. a few games of Choo Choo Rocket. But then it's it's back to Fortnite. It's back to Fortnite. That's, That's or it, Valorant. Right. So so I took Harry to EGX once, and um, I was like, they they have a whole like retro section. Yeah. And I was like, right, we are going to play retro games. We're going to no interest. Yeah. I sat for forty five minutes watching him in an expo with brand new games that weren't out and retro games. Yeah, and he was playing Minecraft in the middle of it, and I'm like, we've got this. Can you not? But I'm trying not to be on that your person. recommendation. <laughs> we watched this year, Eight Bit Christmas, the the movie about a guy to the and my kids watched it. They didn't. They clearly didn't like it. They were watching it because really? they could see that I was crying, and I, you know, it was obviously <laughs> meant a lot to me. And yeah. they were clearly bored by it and doing it out of a duty to me. So. Oh, yeah. they're slightly older, aren't they? Because my kids loved it because there's a lot of slapstick and puke jokes and stuff in yeah. there. Um, but that film, oh yeah, there's oh, it's about... a great film. I loved it. I, I was, you know, sons and dads, 1980s. Oh, I'm I'm in pieces from the very very start. Yeah, that end, that end, absolutely destroyed them. Yeah, Ian, thank you so much for coming on random access oh, this is man. i could sit here for another hour just i checking. hope that was okay i get uh you know i've enjoyed the the run so far and you've had such good guests on you had count bim face on <laughs> what's that about that was, that was nuts
I mean, you know, sometimes when you have people on this show, you have a little chat before you hit record, and there was no straight in with that one. Straight, oh, he, he, straight was, really? Oh, I like, I like that. So, I, uh, you know, to be on with 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 that, and there's been a few other people. There was the the fast knife Freddy thing, whatever that was. There was Minder. I, I've really enjoyed listening to it. So, thank you, thank you, thank you for asking me to come on. I appreciate it. No, no, thanks for coming on. We do have to um, uh, give a big shout out to our exec producers. Okay, so that's Mark Gidley. Um, Tim Nichols and Andy Goss, um, and why not? Why not shout out producers as well? Harsh yeah, Singh, on. Sam Hughes, Craig Cannon, and Martin Warren. There we go. Um, there we go. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for coming on. It was great ah, to see you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. That's the um, that's the rehearsal done. Should we? Uh, should we do it for real now? <laughs> you know what? I believe you as well. I believe you. CBFL. <laughs>